And good evening, everybody. This is live and uncut. Um, I'm I'm just absolutely delighted with my guest today. I found this lady on Google Plus a few uh, about a year ago, and uh, as you know, it's always been my plan to uh, start my own broadcast. And live and uncut started at the beginning of the year, and I made contact with her, and um, she was a little bit sort of trepidation about whether she could uh, come on the show, but I managed to twist her arm. Um, Mobile Artist Winner of the Year 2012-2013. I'm delighted to uh, invite to my show today Sarah Jarrett. Sarah, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you very much, and thank you for having me on the show. There's no problem at all. Um, I've just another thing which I just checked out. On you've got thirteen and a half thousand followers on Google Plus, which is no mean feat. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> well done for that. Well done. Thank you. I just well, uh, actually uh, follow receptionists. Well, <laughs> people have been very loyal on Google Plus, and it's kind of just gradually grown and grown. So no, it's been a really good, a good place to show my work. Yeah, it's a it's a fantastic site. You're you're quite right. Um, just to explain to the guests that, that are watching, um, what I'm going to do later on after uh, a few words with with Sarah and her work and how she's got started and and her processes. I'm going to use Pinterest again to uh, show her work, and and I'll hold that Pinterest site uh, on the screen so that uh, Sarah can talk through uh, some of the uh, images which I'm going to show. And um, uh, believe me, there's some very very good work for you to look at, and uh, and no doubt with a bit of luck, some of you may think, well, I'm going to have a crack at this and see uh, see if I can get uh, get some imagery going as well, because uh, this is truly fascinating work which Sarah creates. So Sarah, let's let's if we can start at the beginning. How, how did how did this idea of putting art and photography together come about for you? Well, I think it goes right back to my kind of initial interest in photography. Really, I mean, I did my degree in photography. I think when I finished school, I was really not sure at all what I wanted to do. And I wanted to do something creative. And I was really interested in also being a journalist. So I decided to do a photography degree course. So I went to art school in London. And it was kind of from that point that it really kind of opened my eyes, mainly looking at other students' work, but talking to other students, working with technicians. It was a really good course. And it was very broad. It wasn't. Um, it kind of encouraged you to really think about using photography in a creative way and we looked at all sorts of different processes but it was from the very beginning really that I had an interest in not just sort of looking at photographs on their own but thinking about how I could work onto photographs or take parts of them away and use different media with them so I think from the very beginning I was really interested in that idea and I think really it's what I'm doing now has been a really gradual evolution of kind of experimenting and trying out different things and yeah. it takes a long time I think to, to to get to to get to a point where you you kind of feel comfortable with your style and feel like you've reached a style that is you so I think my work's yeah. changed an awful lot I mean when I look back on things that I was doing 10 years ago it's very different to what I'm doing now but then I think mm. technology changes all the time as well so that has an influence too yeah obviously the technology side of things obviously you know helps us all basically as we develop through so really from what you're saying here then photography was photography was your first love yeah I think so yes yeah and there's a development <laughs> <laughs> <That's laughs> it I'm just yeah, thinking you, about that because I haven't really thought about that before. But yeah, I think it was. I think I was quite passionate yeah. about it. Probably, do you I want mean, me I, to stop the show and you start thinking about that again? Or are you, you sure it was photography? Yeah, we can carry on. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, I think I, I mean, I've always been... Lots of people ask me if I do describe my work as photography because it's quite manipulated, um, yeah. particularly my portrait work. And I think I would still say that I am a photographer, but um, I'm interested in manipulation and I'm interested in painting and bringing all of those things together. Yeah, this, this is what we spoke about before we started the show. I've, I've got this big thing. And, and where does art finish and photography start? You know, you can go right the way back, right the way back to all the early for the artists and, and what they created. Obviously, you had guys that created in terms really what we perceive today as photojournalism, 
and then you've got the portrait artist, portrait photographers, you've got the landscape artist and the landscape photographers. So can I just ask you your, your opinion about this? Where do you? Well, it's difficult probably for you to answer because of the style of your work, but where, in your opinion, does art finish and photography start? Well, I don't really like putting boundaries around things, and uh, I what I really like about the fact that you, if you don't put back, if you don't put things in specific groupings, like if you put photography in one group and you put art in another, I think that's very dangerous because mm. you're not you're not encouraging a kind of interplay between the two. So, I try not to think that there is a boundary to photography. I think what I'm really interested in is seeing how far you can take a photographic process, how much you can manipulate it, and yeah, whether yeah. the end product then ends up becoming a piece of art or a piece of photography doesn't really matter to me. What's interesting is that process you go through and, and how you experiment and produce a final piece, whether it's photography or art. Yeah, that, I think that's I think that's a fair comment actually. What you said there, I'm, I've always been looking for that boundary, and I think sometimes I should stop looking for that boundary to be honest with you and say, no, there isn't a boundary. If anything, it's just a continuation of art, isn't it? Who yeah. who actually would you say was a photographer which you say inspired you when you were first, say at uh, at the student at your student level? What, what type of photographer sort of really caught your eye that um, you would be inspired by? Well when, I first, well, when I was first at college, I mean, being introduced to uh, lots of different types of photography, I mean, I was, I was interested in people like Bill Brandt and a lot of uh, black and white photography in the very beginning. But I think it was mainly looking at other students' work and when I saw other people scratching away at pictures or starting to paint on them or manipulating mm. them what really opened my eyes to thinking there are lots of other ways of, of using the photographic process. Yeah. Um, so I, I, mean, I mean I I look at photography but I look at art as much as I do look at photography. Um, in fact I look at more art I think than I do sort of photographers work. There are very few photographers that I seriously follow. There's probably one who I think is absolutely incredible and do and really pushing the boundaries of what photography can do and that's Chris Friel and I think he's absolutely Wait, I've never heard of him Chris Friel he's on Google Plus yeah yeah I was going to check amazing. him out I've never heard of him and I, yeah and I do follow his work really seriously because yeah. I think he's making some really exciting images but um, there are there are very few photographers now that I really follow I tend to follow more illustrators artists people like that yeah. and stuff you must um, give me the uh, the address of that uh, guy, and we'll, I'll put it in the show notes, as they say, uh, on, on the blog. So uh, uh, that's the photography side of things. What about the uh, the artist? What, what artist would you say is uh, an inspiration to you? Um, the art that I really am interested in is uh, I, I really like illustration work, and I like artists that use different media, uh, particularly sort of collage work and um, there's a lot of contemporary illustration that I really like but I'm always mm -hmm. looking and uh, we, we talked about Pinterest before mm -hmm. when we were chatting at the beginning and I think that's a brilliant place to find different people's yeah. work that you maybe haven't been exposed to before uh, especially mm -hmm. because you can look at an image and then it will lead you to other images either by the same person or similar in a similar vein um, yeah, okay. so I think that's that's a really good way of kind of looking at work yeah, uh, that's a very good segue you've done there, um, Sarah, because you're good at this. Because I can now go to screen share, and okay. um, we'll bring up uh, the. Uh, just bear with me one second. Uh, um, here we go. So, screen share. So for the uh, viewers that are, are watching, I've just gone to uh, screen share on on my computer, um, using the Pinterest. And um, there you can see one of uh, Sarah's portraits. We're going to leave the portraits to talk about that later. But I'd like to start off, if you don't mind, Sarah, if you, can you let me just um, do one final thing. You should now be seeing the, um, the Pinterest screen. And while Sarah talks us through uh, this particular image, um, 
I've only got I've only got the file name A52. Um, is there yeah, a name for sure the that's come up. Um, It's actually uh, a, a, a landscape. Most of the landscape work that I do um, is centred around where I live. I live in Norfolk in East Anglia, and uh, that's uh, hell, um, a place called Claxton. Um, or I'm just looking at the pictures that you've chosen. I think nearly all of them are images that were taken uh, with a mobile phone and then edited using apps. That's definitely one of that series. Um, So a lot of my landscape photography I use a phone to shoot on, mainly because it's just really portable. Um, And I really got interested in mobile photography through long distance running. I used to run and take pictures Mm. when I was running and I found it so much easier to just take a phone so I could take pictures rather than take a DSLR with me. So, um, yeah, that's been edited with purely just using apps. Um, Some of the apps that I use are Modern Grunge, um, Superimpose, um, I think I might have used Distressed Effects on that one. Okay. Um, and I, I tend to make lots of different pictures with apps of the same picture and then I layer them all together so it's like a sandwich so that in some apps the effect is quite strong and it can be a bit overpowering but if you layer lots of pictures together so you just get a small amount of each uh, of, of the way each app works, it works better as an overall effect. That's a very good point you mentioned there because I'm looking at this image here and, and I'm thinking, well, I can see the texture in, in the sky uh, and a little bit of texture going over the trees, but I can't really see the texture in the lower half of the of the image. If, yeah. it, if there is texture there, it's, it's very faint. Yeah, it's and I was going to ask you, had you created it in a layer format and and sort of masked the, the lower half of this particular image. Yeah, I don't use masking at all. I never never mask, but I do use superimpose to layer so that you get a less concentrated effect of each of, of, of what each app has done in the picture. Right. I think if you look at the grass you can kind of see that's been uh, worked worked on a little yeah. bit. Picked up a the, the one thing I can't do, and I know there's a way of doing it, but I'm not familiar with it. it, it I can't zoom in on this particular image, but uh, okay. this is lovely. I, I, you know, it's the, it's the, how would you actually present this? Say, say you've, you've got this uh, uh, in your portfolio to sell. How would that be? How would that be? Uh, what material would you be using to to put that image on? Um, some kind of a canvas print, or no, or, no, or luster, or yeah, what? Yeah, I would probably. Uh, canvas or um, yeah, yeah I, I would rather use a luster paper than a gloss but um, I yeah. very rarely print my images um, mainly because I work in the, the fields of licensing okay. so I, I work for two agencies and most of my pictures are licensed for posters, cards, book covers, things like that so right. okay. it's very unusual for me to actually print something up um, occasionally mm-hmm. not very often Okay, let's uh, moving on to another one. I love this scene. That was, I think this is probably one of the first, uh, not the first one, so, but when I saw it, I, I've got to have a little chat with Sarah again to uh, to get her to on, on the show. And um, again, it's called A two seven three. I've got a feeling these are from my website, and I think what it probably, does yeah. when you put them onto the site, it just shows the pictures and it puts the That's file right. in. But usually, yeah. I try and hide those, <laughs> but somehow those <laughs> haven't. Got um, yeah, it's a beautiful place. I mean, I'm really yeah. lucky where I live. But I'm kind of surrounded by some really lovely wild places, and uh-huh. uh, I, I'm out a lot with my uh, camera or my phone, just looking for those kind of very poetic, romantic uh, yeah. kind of vistas. Uh, it doesn't matter what time of year it is, but it's it's just looking for that kind of moment when you get that real poetic kind of quality in a in a view. Um, this is a place that I go to a lot. It's the Ted Ellis Reserve in uh-huh. Surlingham. It's like a wild, a very wild place, but it's really beautiful. It's got these lovely channels of water that go all the way through. I love the reflection in the water here. It's, uh, you caught that bit. And this is with an iPhone as well? Yes. Fantastic. 
Is that um, a, a, an iPhone 5 or, or an earlier version? Well, actually, the phone that I've been shooting on isn't, sorry, not an iPhone. It's uh, I've been using a Sony Ericsson Satio phone for ages, and I've oh, kind right. of just stuck with that. And the reason I've been using that for a long time is because it's got a 12 megapixel uh, res on it, so it's a bit better. So, yeah, I've been using that for years, but I, I think when I first started editing with apps, I was shooting on an iPod Touch, and that was so low res, it was, it mm. was not that great, but I found mm. the, 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 the other phone better, so I've been using that for lens. Oh, right, okay. Let's choose another one here. Um, rather a, a lovely, misty shot. Um, yeah, that's quite an odd one. This is uh, local to you again? Yeah, that's literally just just in the same row in the same lane where I live. So it's mm -hmm. the, the oak trees that are sort of not very far away from where I am. Um, yeah, I think this is a good example of of what I'm interested in in terms of textures. It's got a, a lot of very scratchy sort of textures work through that picture, um, yeah. and, and and also kind of trying to knock a lot of the color out of it. So you've got this very Mm. Uh, it's actually taken in daytime, but because of the way it's been edited, it actually almost looks like moonlight. It's got that real kind yeah. of dark feel to it. But yeah, I really, I, I just love textures and experimenting with how using different textures can really change an image and give it a real atmosphere. Mm. I'm just going to come out of um, screen share for a moment because we'll, we'll come back to to more images. I wanted want to talk to you about these textures, which. By the sound of things, the majority of them are, are straight from the app. Do, have you ever created your own texture, uh, maybe with a with a, yeah. another photograph and layered that on top? I do sometimes, and sometimes I'll just experiment with different ways of making textures with, uh, like staining papers with inks, yeah. or even cough things like coffee, um, mm. and build up all sorts of splashy kind of marks and textures with that, um, and inks, um, and then. Yeah, some, I mean, uh, if I was working on my computer and I was working with something like Photoshop, I, the, I've used quite a lot of flypaper textures, and I really like those. some of those. Mm. Um, those are really good. Um, I, yeah, I look at textures a lot, just, just because they can really change an image and change the way it looks. I'd find yeah, it really yeah, difficult yeah. to edit a picture without using textures in it because I've just so, been doing that so long. So let's let's take a scenario. You're you're out maybe jogging or walking. You see a, a see a scene. Does the does the art come into seeing the scene, or do you take the photograph and think, oh, I'll take that home and do a little bit of experimentation with it, or or you are, do, do you have that initial idea of what you're going to create from the scene that you see when you take the photograph? I don't think I have a specific uh, edited image in my mind when I'm taking a picture. Uh, no. I think the actual process of taking the pictures is quite different. I think it's um, much more to do with looking for um, interesting kind of lighting, composition, all those kind of key things that are going to make the picture really strong. Mm. Uh, I think the the editing process, I kind of see that as something quite separate and I would tend not to kind of think about that when I'm actually taking the photos. But obviously I'm kind of looking at water and sky and thinking about how textures could, could kind of come into play with that. Yeah, that's right. So we're now moving, I'm going to go back to Pinterest again because we're going to start showing some different styles. Apologies to everyone a short while ago, I had the screen stuck on me, my, my apologies for that. But uh, I've corrected that. Um, if I go back to uh, screen share, um, we'll uh, we'll look at some more work here by uh, by Sarah. Um, um, I'm going to look at the um, uh, just one second. Here we go. Um, go the, the still life. Now, this is obviously a studio setup in yeah. in your in your studio there. Yeah. Same, same process using a, uh, the. Um, the, the yeah. phone camera? Yeah, it was shot on a phone camera, but that one uh, was pro that's been edited in Photoshop um, using, right. using textures on my computer. Yeah. Um, I, I really like still life, and I, I quite often will kind of go back to looking at still life imagery. I'm really fascinated by the idea of just putting 
different objects together and playing about with lighting in different ways. Um, I tend yeah. not to use, I don't really use studio lighting, but I use natural light a lot. And uh, yeah, I think that this one's a good example of that, just that really soft kind of light that just kind of is illuminating, but it's very soft over all of the image. So this uh, light is potentially coming through a window maybe with a yeah, some kind of muslin a, a, Yeah, skylight and a window as well. Um, but yeah, I just like the kind of, I think the fruit was had such a lovely kind of, those sort of yellowy brown colours and then the, the kind of dried flowers in the in the vase. I wanted to keep it really pale, but just with that colour in the fruit really. Um, yeah. And I, I think I was... Sorry. Yeah, I'm always looking for that kind of painterly quality to things yeah, as well. Yeah, I can see this. Yeah, I can see this. It's, it's this this rose here is is just beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, that's that was from last year. Yeah, right. I I love flowers. I think they've just got they've got such a, a sort of lovely quality, um, especially mm. when you're looking at them quite close up and the colours as well. The way they're very soft. Um, yeah. I, I, every year I go back to, in the summer. I'm always photographing roses. I just, I've just mm. really like their shapes and uh, and their colours. Yeah, this is a obviously one originally taken outdoors. Some kind of a is that a poppy field or? Uh, yeah, it's, what's it's, again, that's very near to where I live. Right, um, okay, yeah. Yeah, it's just a field that's been left. Um, I think it's on a farm that has been up for sale for a really long time, and every year the poppies mm -hmm. kind of take over. It's absolutely spectacular. Not for very long, because they don't seem to last a long time. That it's, no, they uh, don't. No, there's a poppy field out. very close to where I, I work, and uh, I took some images of it uh, one one particular week, and then about two weeks later it, it was just gone. <laughs> just, again, just gone. Yeah. Yeah. But when they're out, they're absolutely oh, spectacular. Oh, that's stunning. So vivid red in colour. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's mm. that's another one. Where you can see. I mean you can see with that one it's been processed with apps. There's a lot of textures in there. Yeah. Um, and again, trying to get that feel that's almost kind of painted or drawn, um, even though you can still see it is a photograph. Yeah. Um, I really, I think what I like about apps is that you can just experiment and experiment, and sometimes things don't work at all, but. Of course, and, then you, and you just discard it and start again, don't you? Yeah, and it's 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 not a really lengthy process. Um, I mean, and sometimes it can be. I find with landscape work, I tend to make my landscapes a lot quicker than I do my portraits, which take take much longer. But yeah, uh, yeah I mean, the, with the landscape work, I'm, I'm, I think because it's quite intuitive as well, I tend to work on things quite quickly. So talking of portraits... <laughs> When I first saw this, I th I thought, wow, what, the, what this is a new venture for for Sarah. What what uh, tell us about this, Sarah? What is this is this new or has this been uh, something which I've just uh, missed about, in the past? It's about a year old. I'm, I'm I find it quite difficult with my work because it's very split between the landscape work and the portrait work that I do, and I find that people tend to follow one or the other. Um, so I tend to have certain places where I'll post my landscape stuff which is Google Plus um, mm -hmm. and I'll obviously put examples of that on my website but then I'll post my portraits on other sites so that I tend to have very split followers for the two so this one's about a year old and again this one's been made I think this one's nearly all made with an app called iColorama which allows you to really use lots of different brush effects and kind of textures and manipulate an image in all sorts of different ways. It's a really, really good app. Hmm. Um, I mean, I wouldn't, I don't think I'd use it so much for my landscape work, but I find it really experimental and really useful for my portrait work. I've used it a lot. It's probably, it's probably difficult for, well, I'm going to ask the question. How have you created this splash forms on on this on on in this portrait? Is it um, is it something which you've layered on top, or is it something which you've is what, is the image on top of the of the texture? How have you gone about what it? App, what the app allows you to do is edit it in different ways, so you can make selections. Um, I think this bit was edited in the in a brush mode. And it will allow you to the picture. The existing photograph is there underneath, 
but I've yeah. reduced the amount that you can see it quite a lot and you can work with the underlying image and use um, kind of these splashy uh, textural kind of brushes to bring parts of the image out and subdue other elements of it and it's really easy for, to go too far with it and so you can you, ha you have to kind of go through a process of trial and error with it sometimes it works and other times you can really ruin something really easily mm -hmm. So which uh, which so many artists have done, haven't they? They've they've started to paint something and they've painted over the top of that and started again. It's it's been uh, going that way for for centuries, hasn't it? Yeah, and I think you have to accept that. I think mm. if, if you do experiment and you try different things, there are always going to be some things that do work and other things that just don't. So yeah. I think a lot of it's you know is luck. Can you learn to just stop with an image at the right point and not overwork yeah. it? Uh, that one. Again, it's another app called Repix. Um, mm -hmm. That again allows you to use different kind of effects to, to kind of maneuver and manipulate parts of the picture. So you can almost move the picture parts around as if they're flying. Oh, right. okay. um, that's got some really nice effects, and the, those kind of splashy marks that you can see a bit like sort of paint spots or ink spots. So that's part. Yeah brushes that it has um, but I think I'm a lot more experimental with my portrait work I'm, I'm always kind of interested in seeing what you can do with a portrait and mm. and and how how far you can kind of take the process the editing process there's uh, a lot more then, colour in them as well <laughs> they're very colourful compared one, uh, to my I was going to ask you about the model um, is this um, Someone you know, or is it just a? <laughs> That's me. <laughs> it's you, is it? Yeah, I do a lot. I do use self-portraits quite a lot. I didn't um, want to say anything. <laughs> because, because, I'm totally wrong. because it's a lot easier sometimes, and sure. um, also you haven't got all the kind of palaver of having to get a model. But I do, I do work with other people as well. But I think sometimes it's easier to kind of do pictures using yourself as a starting point especially if you are working with uh, a lot of manipulation because the end product might be something that you know is not aesthetically pleasing it might be something that's quite jarring or quite experimental and, and yeah. um, I think that sometimes that feels easier if you're trying that out on yourself rather than on, on somebody else. But I do work with other people as well. But there's a lot of self-portraits in the... In I was going to say, so the, the majority of the uh, portraits here are, are of yourself? Yeah, I think all three. <laughs> all, all three, three that I've chosen there are you, yeah? Yeah. yeah, which makes me look very vain. I think <laughs> it's, really, it's not really a vanity thing. I think it's... it's I think all artists will kind of look... You kind of look at yourself or you're Look at your world, and it's it's really seeing what you can do with that image and how you yeah. can sort of manipulate it in different ways. As you, as you say, I was on a photo photo walkabout uh, in London on last Sunday, and the amount of us that were taking photographs there's about 25 of us walking around London, and none of us wanted photographs taken of each other. We wanted to take photographs of other people. It was quite yeah. strange. I Everyone think people are quite self-conscious in a group yeah. as well. Um, yeah, they are. Yeah, very true experience yeah um i think uh, there was just one image i wanted to do to go back it's back to a landscape this is obviously taken in the winter yeah it's uh close to your home again by the looks of things by the yeah, topography of the land yeah. um using the same process again with the with the camera phone and uh the sony phone and the and the texture yeah we got back to the uh to the ipad back at back at your studio yeah um i mean this one's really nearly all done with with an app called modern grunge it's got some really it, again it's a trial and error thing you have to kind yeah. of sometimes you get a texture that really works and then at other times you can spend a long time going through endless textures and they just don't work with the picture yeah. um, and in fact what I've got on a really old iPod is a whole bank of textures that I've found have worked in modern grunge and I've kept them so I've never updated that iPod touch at all so uh -huh. it's, 
just to keep those that bank of texture so I can always go back to them. But um, yeah, I just yeah. really like the reds in that in that landscape, the way it just picks up on them in the in the grasses. Yeah, it's a it's a lovely image that one. Uh, certainly it caught my eye on the uh, uh, in the um, on the website when I was uh, selecting a few for for this show. And we, what we must do, in actual fact, uh, after the show, I think if you, if you'd be kind enough to send me a, a text message with the uh, the apps that you use, uh, I'm sure followers of uh, of your website and and your Google Plus would be interested to know what you use, and obviously they can have a play with it themselves. Uh, there's certainly I, I've uh, used Distressed FX and Pic Grunger um, before. Um, and, uh, and and had some fun. Uh, there was one other which I, I, I used, which uh, totally amazed uh, my friends at the club. Was a, um, an app called Decim Eight. I don't know whether you've heard of that one at yes, all. Yes, I have. And yeah. it just basically just rips the Quite photograph similar. to shreds. Yes. And uh, <laughs> there was a, I put this photograph up of a, of a rose, and I said, because we've got some very good still life photographers at, at my club. And I said, there you are, and the ladies they are there. I said, there you are, ladies, one for you. I said, and this is what I did to it with Decimate, and it just <laughs> splattered across the screen. And they went, ah, what have you done? Yeah, but anyway, right. Right, so yeah, I've you can... had one picture that's really worked with Decimate. <laughs> it's quite again, different. It's, it, it's trial and error. you just yeah. got to keep going, and if you don't like it, you, yes. you don't show it. You know, just start again. There, there comes a point, though, where you think, I've had enough of this. Let's get back to something <laughs> real, you know? <laughs> Anyway, no, well, that's fascinating. Thanks, Rashani, for for sharing your your tricks there. Uh, basically, it really surprised me because I thought, for, for when we started talking, I thought this is going to be a an in depth Photoshop uh, discussion and this lab on this lab on this, mm -hmm. and then it's so nice to know that these quality images it can be created with such uh, simple tools. Yeah, um, but I think that's the thing is, got, I think yeah. the, that's so I think the, better and better. I think as time has gone on. Um, yeah. The, the apps have got better, but the, what I wanted to say, sorry to interrupt you, is you've got to know what you're doing. You can't just, you've got to have an artist view, you've got to have an artist eye and a photography eye as well to, to make these creations. And uh, I'm sure people, when, when they try it for themselves, will say, mm, this is not just as easy as it looks or is said to sound as easy. So. Uh, a lot of it is is practice though as well I mean I when I first started off I, I, I worked with Photoshop for a long long time before mm -hmm. I began before I started using apps and uh, working and editing on an iPad but um, yeah I, th I think obviously you have got to have an eye and you've got to have a, a sense of what makes a good composition and what and what's going to work and yeah. what isn't going to work but I think at the same time it it can be discouraging as well to make people feel that it's it's something kind of out of reach because I think lots of people have got the ability to make really incredible work but you've mm. got to be prepared to put the time in and to really work at it in order to achieve really good results. Yeah, um, I quite agree with you. I've I've got two very good photo photographers in my household that uh, they just use their phones and I keep saying to them, you know, Get yourself a better better camera and, and get out there, but they're quite happy to do their work on the phone. So yeah. it's it's just it's just the way people are. You know, you can't you can't yeah. knock them for it. They they enjoy doing photography that way. So and that's and and they do produce some very good work. Yeah. Um. Just just going back very uh very quickly to a comment you made. The creation of these uh, images, Sarah. How long? Uh, generally, would you say one takes? You know, obviously, some are more intricate. The portraits obviously take a little bit longer. But could you just give us a rough idea of sort of what time, how much of your time you spend? Yeah, the landscapes don't take nearly as long as the portraits. Um, and I think initially the portraits didn't take that long. But the ones, the images that I'm making now are much more complicated and they take a long time. Um, and I would say with the landscapes, they probably take half an hour at the most okay. to edit, um, whereas a portrait, when I'm working on something that's very complicated and has lots of different layers and lots mm. of painting involved, it can take me a day to do. I used to say if I could do two portraits in a day, that was a really good day. Yeah. So I would say between one or two in a day. Um, but that's purely just because they're much more complicated. And and I think yeah. the ones that you showed were quite early portraits that I did, whereas I think now 
the process is much more complex. It's kind of evolved as time's gone on, mm. so it's no longer to do. You see, I didn't want to show your up-to-date work because I want people to go <laughs> onto your website and see your latest work now. I was giving them a <laughs> teaser. <laughs> Good plan. <laughs> Okay, we're at the stage of the show where I ask my guests um, uh, their views or comments or one word on uh, artists. In this this case, um, I've uh, split it deliberately to uh, have photographers and artists. Normally, it's just straight photographers. So, and um, we're going to start off. The first one is Michael Kenner. So, if you could just describe his work or him in one word and. We'll have a few words to say after that, no doubt. Michael Kenner. I think the word that springs to mind is atmospheric because uh, his pictures are really beautiful. I mean, they have they they're, they're very kind of steeped in that really sort of atmospheric quality. Um, yeah, beautiful work. I mean, I I don't know his work in a lot of depth, but I know no. of. I can kind of visualise his images when when you mentioned his name. I, I first came across Michael Kenner. I think it must have been around about two years ago, um, and I watched uh, several videos on YouTube of his work. Um, and as you know, I think he was originally from Widnes. He now lives in Seattle, um, and it's just the as you say, atmospheric is is such a good word. Uh, he's obviously a minimalist type photographer, but how he gets the atmosphere into such a minimal Stars yeah. just is just purely amazing. They showed an image, a, a video, of him taking a photograph of a tree in Japan, where he goes to quite a lot. Um, and he's knee deep in snow with his Hasselblad, and he's taking this photograph, and and that's all there is: this tree and this snowscape. And it yeah. is just a wondrous image, absolutely wondrous image. Um, delighted when I managed to get one of his books, uh, which was a, a a collector's item in actual fact. So, but it's a, his work is just yeah, amazing, yeah. amazing. He's a real master at kind of, as you said, of paring everything down to its very, its most sort of simplistic, basic qualities, but they're really striking, really beautiful pieces. Yeah, I don't know whether you've seen the photographs of him taking of the um, uh, the chimneys, the turbine chimneys up in uh, the northern part of England. Oh, yeah. How some how someone can make those look beautiful is just beyond me. You know, God, it's really amazing work. Yeah, okay, no. the next one the next one on the list, I'm gonna muck it about a little bit. I'm not gonna give you two photographers and three painters, I'm gonna muck it about. Claude Monet, he's one of my favourite artists. what's uh, the word for for him? Um I think I'd have to say um oh, what was I gonna say for Monet? Um I mean his work's very romantic, isn't it? I mean it's very yeah. much kind of romantic genre. Um, mm -hmm. And I think the danger with Monet is, I mean, I I really love his work, but I think it, sometimes it's become so uh, kind of overused and over kind of produced in all sorts of different ways that mm -hmm. it, it kind of it, it becomes a bit kind of chocolate boxy type yeah. in a way, um, which is a shame because I think it you know when you actually see his paintings uh, up close, they're absolutely. Mm -hmm. Really beautiful. They are um, have you have you seen any of his work? Um, yeah, we never I went to the Musée d'Orsay in Paris and, and saw oh, some did, of right. the water lily paintings, and they're absolutely huge, really striking. I, I don't think I was aware of how big they were in scale. They're absolutely beautiful. They are. That, that's at the uh, Jardin Tuileries and the um, close to the uh, Louvre. Uh, I didn't see I them there. Yeah, they're, they're probably there now. I mean, when I saw there's them... A, this there's before. a huge oval room which they've created with these four... I'm going to use the word gigantic because they are. They're enormous. Yeah, really these good, gigantic yeah. paintings on the on the wall. And if because of the shape of the room, of it, it, it's sort of this oval shape, you, you've got an opportunity to sit there and look at this image. And, it, it, and it's all engulfing. You, you're, you're there. It's just yes. amazing, this, this, uh, this small lake pond, whatever you want to call it, that he, he painted through the seasons at his house. Uh, truly amazing work. But I, I, I do understand what you're saying. Uh, very romantic. It's a very good word, actually. Romantic type photography, but, um, sorry, um, artistry, paintings, but it's something which you do see a lot of. And, and uh, unfortunately, it's, it's, given it that, it's given it that chocolate box uh, view. And I don't wish to say this, but it, I get the impression it's probably slightly cheapened the work in, in, in what you 
in what you look at without once you see it in real life and, yeah. you know, and the, the amazing work that he put into it. Yeah, because when you see them uh, reproduced in books, you don't really get a sense of the scale or no, you don't. even that unless it's a really good reproduction, the colours don't always reproduce that well either. So I think seeing them for real is it makes a huge difference. But yeah. Yeah, I, I love his work. And actually, when you have you been, I don't know if you've been to Shiverni to actually see his house. No, I, I haven't. You I actually haven't. see the, the the pond where he painted those water lilies. It's quite mm. incredible to think how he actually did that because it's mm. um, the I mean, the garden is absolutely beautiful and the houses too. But yeah, it's it's really interesting when you see it and and yeah. then think about what he did with that subject matter. Yeah, it's, it's one of the places I've been meaning to go to, but I've, I've never got round to it. Okay, the next one, uh, Vincent van Gogh. Um, I think I'd have to say expressive. Yeah. I mean, I love van Gogh's work because I, I just think it's so full of kind of... Uh, it's so uh, emotive. Uh, the way I love the colours that he chooses... Um, and sometimes the juxtaposition of one set of colours against another that are really striking. I really, oh. really like that. Um, I think and you're less. He's work, <laughs> been his work in Amsterdam. Uh, I've been to the Van Gogh Museum. Yeah, yeah. In, in Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah. Really, I, I guess uh, it makes such a difference when you actually see them. This is real. this is a very good point. What you mentioned, especially when you're talking about um, paintings. Uh, uh, because with the photography art, you, you're seeing it uh, regularly on on paper in a magazine, and uh, and sometimes in a in a in an exhibition, I don't really get the the sort of the the, the feeling that I do when I go and see an artist's exhibition. Um, again, it's the size generally uh, that you look at. You don't really appreciate the well in uh, Monet's uh, examples how big those uh, paintings that he made, and in Van Gogh's there are some sort of smaller paintings than you would have expected to be larger so it sort of throws you a little bit in terms yeah. of that um i was due to I go I was sorry i was just going to say the difference it's interesting yeah. to me the difference in spaces where you see uh paintings as opposed to photographic work because i i find a lot of photographic galleries quite clinical sometimes and i, yeah, think I agree that has an effect on how you look at things as well doesn't it yeah i because agree with you there yeah. I went to see um, uh, what's his name Klein and uh, Moriyama uh, two photographers at the Tate um, and I've, I've seen the work in the magazines and everything and, and the books and love their work and for some reason and I'm probably going to get my to get loads of emails on the back of this one, but for some reason the the exhibition just didn't grab me you know it didn't sort of you know, there was no wow factor i was I was really quite surprised. Whereas yeah. when I went to see Monet, um, there was two exhibitions I went to see Monet when I was in Paris last time. Uh, one was at uh, I forget which gallery it was, and then I went to the uh, the Jardin. The uh, is it the or Orangery? I think he's or they call it the Orangery. I'm not sure, but um, and it, it, it was just a totally different uh, feeling and uh, you know appreciation of the work. Yeah, um, it, it's it's something something which. Sometimes I find photography doesn't come over that way. I'll, I'll turn over a page, you'll see it on the website, and I think, wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. And yet when you go and see it live, so to speak, uh, you, you, so the question marks uh, sort of come to me, and I, I wonder, was it worth coming to see this? Should I, you know, it just confuses me slightly. Um, there was something else I was going to say about Van Gogh. Yeah, the Amsterdam uh, Museum, which has been refurbished, I understand. Yeah. Uh, all his work was moved into another... Um, a museum for a period of time, but his his, uh, his permanent uh, exhibition. Uh, apparently, the new building is is quite amazing to go and uh, visit now. Yeah, I'd like to. So keep that. Uh, yeah, it was I've, a long I've, time ago when I went. Yeah, the last time I was there about two years ago, and, I, and the the, um, the museum was closed. So uh, I mm -hmm. think it's, I'm pretty certain it's open now. Um, <clears throat> John Constable is your next uh, artist for. Oh Pond. gosh. Well, I love Constable's work, but that's uh, a lot of it, it. You know, he's obviously an artist who uh, was based not that far away from where sure. I live. So, yeah. 
Um, and in fact, I used to live in, uh, I taught for a while in Ipswich, so I got to know kind of Constable Country very well. Uh -huh. uh, uh, I think I would, have I used romantic for Monet? Yes, yeah. I think I would have to say poetic then for, for him okay. because uh, his work is kind of full of visual poetry. Um, mm. I, I think a lot of people find his work quite difficult to engage with, but I, I really love his images. I think they've got mm. uh, beautiful, the, the landscapes are really, really beautiful. And so they really have that feel of the kind of English countryside as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that one was uh, poet poetic. Yes. I forgot I'm going to run out of words. <laughs> <laughs> I actually okay. did have to scribble a list of words in case I ran out. <laughs> <laughs> You're cheating. You mustn't do that. I am cheating, I'm afraid. I'll admit to it. <laughs> the final one, um, David Noten, the uh, UK landscape photographer. Um, do you know, I don't remember his <laughs> I'm trying to visualise this work. Yeah, see if I can get one. Just you, you carry. I'll tell you what we'll do. Hold on one second. You can you, show me one of his. You, you carry on. You, you carry on waffling. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I'm looking at my list desperately. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just doing a quick search on David. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I've just, I've just typed in David Nocton, so don't worry. Here we go, David <laughs> Nocton. Here we go. Here's some images. Uh, David Noten, so if I go screen share, David's from Bristol and he... Oh, he, yeah. Sorry, he, I completely uh, forgot his work. Um, he, uh, does a lot of work for English Heritage, I believe, and yeah. uh, does a lot of workshops. I think he's based down now in Cornwall. Yeah, his work's um, beautiful. I really like the colours. A lot of his work yeah. is quite colourful, isn't it? Um, yeah. I think the word I would use is ethereal for his work. Oh, what a good word! What a good word! If there, if it, yes, that's a good word. <laughs> I'll yeah. leave that one for you to say. It's always got yeah. that kind of mag sort of almost magical kind of quality about it. So sort of still and but just lovely, lovely colours as well. Yeah, he, uh, are you still there? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I thought I'd lost you. Um, I met David. Uh, uh, Blimey, five years ago, he was having a, had an exhibition in, um, uh, in the Oxo building in London. And uh, there was one image there of a uh, glacier, which he took, I believe, I believe if my memory is correct, it was uh, uh, in uh, Argentina. And I was just standing looking at the image, and he, and he walked up to the side of me and he says, what do you think? I said, well, it's, it's clearly outstanding. I said, and I looked at him and realized who I was talking to. So I said, well, can you tell me about it? So he said, he said, yeah, he said, my wife and I walked across uh, through some uh, countryside and we got to the place and we pitched our tent and uh, set the camera up and got up at 2 o'clock in the morning, got ready, and the light didn't happen. So he said, so we, so we went, back, went back to the tent and made ourselves breakfast. He said, <laughs> and then we walked about for a bit, back to the tent the following morning. Five days it took him to get this one image of this glacier. I wonder if I can actually uh, find it. it if I, it's just truly, let's go to the screen share again, if I can find I, it. I had a similar experience when I went up to the island of Egg, which is in the Inner Hebrides last summer. Yeah. And when I first arrived on the island, I was told a photographer had gone to stay there for a month and he waited a month to get exactly the right light he wanted on one of the beaches there. Yeah. And he got his shot in the end, but he got it really near to the end of the month. And I, I was just amazed at how long people will wait to just get yep. the right, the right light, the right time, the right image. Right light, the right time. I don't think I'm going to find it quick enough. But yes, it took him five days to find this, get the right light, and yeah. uh, he took a I couple of images. People, and light, light was I gone. do admire yeah. that a lot. I don't. I don't think I've got the patience. I. I think I'm not that good a planner. I'll tend to just go out and see what I can find or what's there at that particular time. I'm not. I'm not a great planner of uh, of pictures. Um, no, I think. I think I you described it well. Have the patience to do that. Yeah, I think with the way you were describing it earlier on, when you, when you said that you're out either for a run or for a walk and you've got your phone and you take what you see, 
Um, a lot of people will probably turn around and say that's grab type photography, and uh, you know, but that's that's the star which you've created for yourself, and and uh, obviously you take it home and you you do uh, do your studio work on top of that. Um, each to their own, but yeah, David Noten must be one of the most patient photographers that I've ever heard of. I couldn't believe when he said five days to uh, to take that image. It was uh, quite amazing. Yeah. So that's your five. Well done. That's uh, very good. Very good words there, Sarah. So we've we've timed this absolutely <laughs> superbly. <laughs> we've timed this absolutely superbly. So uh, where where can people find you? This is the most important part of the show for you. Where can people find you? Let's uh, your web address and your Google Plus addresses. Okay, um, you can main you can find all my work on my website, which is sarahjarrettart.com. Right, that's, that's lovely. Main, that's my website, and on my website you can find links to all the other places where I have my work. Um, I sell my work on Redbubble, and the link to that is on my website. Um, on Google okay. Plus, I think I'm. I, do you know? I can't remember my Google Plus. I think I'm just Sarah Jarrett Art. I think I think you are Sarah Jarrett. Yeah. yeah. Google Plus. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where you can yeah, find I me on Facebook. I, I have Sarah Jarrett Artist page on Facebook yeah. as well. These, and these are all linked off your website, yeah. Yeah, you can find those links on my website. That's fantastic. Yeah. So um, at the end of the show, if you could send me a text message uh, that uh, I can put that in the uh, show okay. notes, as we say, and then um, those that, that are watching, we've got uh, some viewers watching us now live, which is really nice. Those that watch later on on YouTube, and uh, get yourself over to Sarah Jarrett's uh, website and uh, take a look at her fantastic work. Sarah, it's been absolutely fantastic talking to you. I, I really have enjoyed fantastic. it. It's, it's a, it's a. It's a, 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 a side of photography which I enjoy, and um, once you send those uh, those uh, names of those apps over to me, I'm going to certainly download a few and uh, have a little play myself. Okay. I'm, I'm in I'm in the middle of getting involved with a lot more street photography at the moment because uh, of a certain uh, I don't know whether you've heard of the Arcanum, uh, which has started on Google Plus, and I've just uh, been invited to join that, so I'm getting a lot involved with. Uh, a lot of street photography and stuff, uh, which uh, I'm really enjoying at the moment. Stopping people in the streets and asking them to take the photograph is <laughs> it's very enlightening what you get. <laughs> but anyway, thank you very much for having me. It's been really great to talk to you as well. Thank oh, you. Okay. I'm glad I'm glad you enjoyed it. And uh, as I say to everyone at the end of the show, uh, yeah, you guessed it. Leave your camera bag at home. Bye bye. <laughs>